Arc Raiders is one of those games that quietly flew under the radar, unless you've been following its development for a longer time now. Developed by Embark Studios, the team behind the finals and formed by former DICE developers who worked on titles like Battlefield 5, Arc Raiders is built by a studio with a strong background in large-scale, technically demanding multiplayer games. Under the hood, Arc Raiders runs on a heavily customized version of Unreal Engine 5. But unlike most Unreal Engine 5 titles, it takes a much more performance-focused approach. The developers intentionally cut back on features like Lumen and Nanite, opting instead for classic lighting solutions, traditional mesh LODs, and aggressive asset streaming to keep frame times consistent and predictable. This design choice results in significantly lower CPU and GPU overhead, making Arc Raiders behave more like a well-optimized Unreal Engine 4 era title, rather than a typical next-gen Unreal Engine 5 release. That also means fewer stutters, better 1% lows, and more stable performance across a wide range of hardware. So instead of pushing experimental rendering features, Arc Raiders focuses on clean visuals, controlled scene complexity, and predictable performance behavior. Alright, let's jump straight into the settings, starting with the graphics presets comparison as usual. I tested each preset both with the dynamic RTX GI settings and separately with static GI to see the impact on performance. To keep things comparable, I matched the RTX GI preset to the main graphics preset. So Epic overall uses RTX GI Dynamic High, High uses Dynamic High, and so on. So as expected, the biggest performance gains come from lowering the overall preset. Next, we have the standard preset comparison with global illumination set to static across all settings. This lets us see how the basic graphic options scale on their own. Dropping from Epic to High gives about a 22% performance uplift. Epic to Medium recovers roughly 38%, and Epic to Low delivers a massive 66% improvement. So even without Dynamic GI, lowering the main preset provides clear performance gains while keeping visuals somewhat generally consistent. Next up we have all 6 different anti-aliasing options. For these comparisons I tested everything at the native resolution. TAAU, which is an evolved version of the standard TAA, unsurprisingly looks the softest of all options. TSR, Unreal Engine's built-in upscaler, is much sharper than TAU, but performance drops significantly. Then we have two DLAA models, CNN and the newer Transformer model. The Transformer version is more taxing on performance, and later we'll dive deeper into the differences between CNN and Transformer DLSS, including visual quality trade-offs. FSR3 also holds up well here, with performance similar to Transformer DLSS, while XCSS looks a bit too soft and overall performs close to TSR, making it hard to justify using. And one quick note, you can adjust the render resolution for both TAAU and TSR in these settings. However, I wouldn't recommend using TAAU because even at 100% render resolution, it still looks noticeably too soft and shimmery compared to the other options. Now let's compare all the upscaling techniques, DLSS, FSR3, and XESS, using the highest available quality for each. For example, XESS is set to ultra quality. Performance-wise, the DLSS CNN model is roughly on par with FSR3, while the Transformer version is similar to XESS in resource usage. In this particular example of a power line, DLSS Transformer comes out as the strongest contender. Shimmering and ghosting are heavily reduced compared to all other options. Although keep in mind this won't hold true in every scenario. Here's a quick side by side look at how DLSS CNN compares to the Transformer model. The main issue with the older CNN version is the noticeable ghosting. You can clearly see the trails it leaves behind during movement. The Transformer model handles this much better reducing ghosting and producing cleaner visuals overall. I've also noticed these visual effects around the character, like a faint glow or halo along the edges. But they're really only noticeable in certain scenes. This is actually a fairly common Unreal Engine artifact caused by Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, or SSAO. Since SSAO is calculated purely in screen space, it can struggle around object silhouettes, especially when the background is very bright. Because the technique can't see depth information behind the character, the occlusion gets miscalculated and creates that outline. I've tested all the in-game settings and unfortunately there's no option that really mitigates this behavior. So this isn't really a bug in Arc Raiders, it's simply a known limitation of screen space rendering. Next up is field of view, and interestingly increasing the FOV actually improves performance in Arc Raiders. A wider FOV makes objects smaller on screen, which slightly reduces pixel shading complexity and GPU load. This is especially noticeable in scenes with lots of detail or effects. 
and as a result higher FOV values can deliver a small FPS uplift and more stable frame times while also improving situational awareness. Next I tested the RTX global illumination setting in isolation to see how much it actually impacts performance. Interestingly the high, medium and low presets all perform almost identically. Any small FPS differences you might notice are mostly due to the recording variance rather than a real performance change. The main difference is visual quality, not frame rate. So if you want to use RTX GI I'd recommend the dynamic high option. It looks very close to epic except for slightly darker shadows in very few spots in the game while delivering around a 4% performance uplift. And if performance or frame time consistency is your main priority, the static GI option is also a solid choice, as it's very well implemented and keeps performance extremely stable. And just as mentioned, the difference between Dynamic Epic and Dynamic High is almost imperceptible during normal gameplay. And even when you actively look for it, it's very hard to notice. Now let's look at the actual in-game options starting with view distance. In the comparison you can see that objects in the far distance are called at lower settings. For example, medium and high presets start dropping distant objects or foliage, while Epic renders everything fully, including all distant foliage. And because ArcRaiders doesn't use Nanite, view distance also directly affects the level of detail pop-in. Lower settings make objects switch to lower detail models earlier, which can be noticeable in large open areas. So if you want maximum visual fidelity and minimal LOD pop-in, Epic is the only preset that captures everything. Though lowering it to high can help performance without heavily impacting gameplay in most cases. With patch 107 a new cinematic setting was added, but in practice it doesn't bring any meaningful visual improvements over Epic. What it does bring is a noticeable performance hit, especially considering how little changes on screen. Because of that I'd recommend sticking to high or Epic. Both keep LOD pop-in under control, while cinematic simply isn't worth the performance cost for what you gain visually. When it comes to anti-aliasing, these settings only affect TSR and TAAU. TAAU doesn't impact performance much and Epic looks best visually here. TSR however barely changes visuals but it can hit performance so it matters which method you choose. So for TSR I recommend low to keep FPS stable without losing quality. When it comes to shadows, dropping from Epic to high gives almost a 6% FPS gain. Epic to medium adds just over 6% and Epic to low improves the performance by nearly 10%. Epic has the softest shadows while high and medium are very close in FPS, so the difference is minimal. I'd still advise against medium as you'll see in a few seconds, making high the better balance between visuals and performance. I also want to briefly address how shadows behaved before patch 107 because the difference is quite significant. Before the patch, shadow LOD was noticeably worse. Performance was lower overall and when comparing epic to cinematic, shadows would often drop out abruptly or disappear in visible blocks at certain distances. With the patch 107, Embark clearly improved the shadow level of detail streamlining. Instead of shadows popping in or vanishing suddenly, they now transition much more gradually. And the distance at which shadows switch to simplified versions is pushed much further out now. And just to add to that, this shadow level of detail change in patch 107 affects every shadow setting. Even medium no longer shows the extreme shadow pop-in that was present before. The transitions are now much smoother across all presets, which means lower shadow settings are far more usable than they were pre-patch. Despite all these improvements, I'd still recommend sticking to at least high. 
In darker environments, anything below high can fail to illuminate certain areas at specific distances, even though those areas should clearly be lit. Next up is post-processing. This setting controls effects like lens flares, god rays, bloom, and ambient occlusion, which also helps explain some of the visual artifacts I'll touch on shortly. For most players, medium is the best option here. If you really want god rays, you can step up to high, but anything above that isn't worth the performance cost. And just a quick add-on with the new cinematic settings from the latest patch. Moving from epic to cinematic costs around 8% FPS, with almost no visual improvement at all, making it hard to justify in practice. Now let's move on to the issue I touched on earlier. Ambient occlusion on foliage and bushes. I'm leaving this section in for anyone who's curious or wants to test this themselves. Because before the patch 107, this was a noticeable problem. Embark has since made clear improvements, meaning this fix no longer needs to be applied, regardless of your settings. Pre-patch, the issue was especially pronounced when using DLSS Transformer model. Bushes and foliage would look extremely shimmery and distracting compared to the CNN model. The only real workaround at the time was using the hidden cinematic setting. Not for post-processing, but for effects quality. Although this came with a massive performance hit and wasn't a great solution. Another option was setting post-processing to low, which disables ambient occlusion entirely. Again, that was more of a workaround than a real fix. So the good news is that with patch 107, this behavior is largely resolved across all settings. Moving on to textures, which mainly affect internal resolution and texture filtering at oblique viewing angles. Performance is very similar across all settings, so there's no meaningful FPS impact here. Arc uses a streamlined texture setup with more aggressive streaming and lower overall VRAM allocation compared to most modern titles which is why VRAM usage stays extremely low. Because of that, there's really no downside to running higher settings. That's why I'd recommend sticking to high or epic. And of course, a quick add-on comparing epic to the new cinematic texture setting. Worst case performance drops are around 3% with no real visual difference. Next up is effects quality. This controls a range of visual elements, including cloud detail and subsurface scattering. While I mainly focused on clouds, subsurface scattering didn't show noticeable difference during testing. At high, the clouds gain a lot more granular detail and definition, making skies look richer and more textured. My recommendation here would be to stick to medium or high, depending on whether you want the extra visual fidelity without impacting performance too much. With the patch 107, the new cinematic settings for effects quality doesn't produce any real visual differences compared to high, but it does come with about a 4% performance penalty. So as it stands, medium or high remain the practical choices for most setups. Effects quality also impacts particle systems which cover things like explosion, smoke and other dynamic visual effects. In my testing, the only noticeable difference was at low, where smoke density was slightly reduced. Otherwise, high and medium look essentially identical for these effects. Moving on to reflections. Arc Raiders uses a screen space variant since there's no lumen implementation. This setting mainly controls the internal resolution of reflections, and at low, some reflections are completely disabled in certain scenes. Performance is essentially identical across all settings, so I'd recommend sticking to Epic. This ensures the most accurate and detailed reflections without any FPS cost. I also tested the new cinematic setting for reflections quality, but I couldn't find any visual or performance differences, so for that reason I didn't include any examples. Epic remains the practical choice here. Foliage quality, as the name implies, controls the density, detail and draw distance of plants, grass and other vegetation. 
Higher settings make environments feel fuller and more natural, while lower settings reduce detail and density. So my personal recommendation for arc raiders is to stick with high or above if performance isn't an issue, as it preserves the visual richness of the game world. And as a side note, the new cinematic settings in patch 107 don't change foliage quality at all, compared to Epic. And finally, we have Global Illumination Resolution, which controls the quality and detail of how indirect light bounces around the scene. Higher settings increase accuracy in light diffusion, but in Arc Raiders, the differences are extremely subtle. So because of that, I'd recommend sticking to low. You gain a significant performance boost, while the visual impact is minimal and virtually unnoticeable during normal gameplay. And for this comparison, I did not include the cinematic setting, as it also does not differ from the epic settings regarding visuals and FPS. Don't shoot! So that wraps up the comparison between max and optimized settings. This gives a clear look at how much performance you can save without losing noticeable visual quality. Whether you're aiming for the best visuals or the smoothest FPS, these insights should help you find the right balance for your system. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. I owe you. I owe you one.